Good morning. Welcome to Community Voice. I'm your host, Keith Paris. I want to thank everybody for joining us this morning. Uh, good morning, Keon. Good morning, Keon. Good morning, How Carly. Morning? How are you this morning? Hello, young Carly King. And uh, Michelle, how are you, Michelle? Michelle, Good. Michelle. Oh, my God. You and this face voice. My oh, my God. This is our NPR voice. <laughs> is that what it is? This is our NPR voice. <laughs> well, it sounds. It was great that you that you highlighted Hazel Scott. Um, Hazel Did Scott. Did you know she was that phenomenal? Oh, yeah, yeah. Hazel Scott, though, got caught up with the House Un-American Committee. Yeah, I mentioned it. Yeah. yeah she uh, actually left the country for a while. Right. She, But no, Hazel Scott was just an incredible. Basically lost her career here. Her career behind it mm -hmm. yeah yep yeah and dr williams and they have the weirdest looking son i'm clean powell the third he is <laughs> such a weird looking dude uh um dr williams said pbs recently aired a documentary featuring um hazel yeah playing oh, the she, piano. she was she's phenomenal i mean just so yeah thank thank you for that Thank you for that. I was uh, had the opportunity. This is a great thing about working here at WNOV 860 106.5 Milwaukee is the people that I get to interview. And um, one of the people <clears throat> that I just, man, it's on, man, it's on my all time interviews, man, is we got a chance to talk to bro, man, uh, Tuesday. And uh, what a great conversation. You got a chance to talk to who? Bro, man. From the from, fifth floor? From the fifth floor. No, you didn't. Yeah, For what? He's Why? In, he's in Mr. Woodson's play. Oh, that's right. He sure is. And the uh, Golden. No, I mean, uh, um, yeah, Golden Girls. But it's like a, a variation of that name, right? A play on that name. And then say, but not yet sanctified. Okay. He's so a good. How did he? How told, was he as an interview? Oh my God, he was good. He was funny. He really? he, he doesn't have problem with the whole bro man thing. He said, "Look, I think he said he did twelve episodes he said That's i'm no it? right he said but i did three four years with birdie mac nobody talk about me and birdie mac they talk about me as bro man because he wasn't he wasn't a cut up real bad on bernie mac he was just one of the dudes at right. the table when they was playing poker and he told the story about and i know he retold the story about how he went in and uh martin he did it straight and then martin said no man and he did something else and that the rest was history but his 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 episodes are classic. Oh man. come on, and, oh, and you man. repeat them. You repeat them, and, every, and like you know, and people of a certain genre, everybody know when you when you say if you just say bro man, everybody know, or you say fifth flop. <laughs> and then I showed a man I did like because you know I'm a movie guy. I said, dude, you were in class act. You were fruity. He said, yeah, I was. Yeah, you were. I don't even remember that. Yeah, yeah, he was in class. You don't act. Remember class act? You don't I know remember what class was class act about. That oh, was that kid was play. play. And they oh, switched. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he was one of the, he was fruity. He was in that. Yeah. I remember that now. Yeah. Okay. All right. So thank you, man. That's I, cool. Well, that's a great interview. What a great job to have, man. Valerie Jarrett. You know. I watched her, I watched Michelle's um becoming tour, book tour. Okay. And I saw Valerie Jarrett's interview with her. Really cool. Um, that was she's that was, cool. She was her backstory cool. with Michelle and how she kind of helped guided that career mm -hmm. stuff. That was cool. Yeah. So anyway, look at you, Cub reporter. Yeah, man. You get you get lucky, man. Every now and then you get the. Uh, there was one interview. I thought I was gonna was it Eric Holder the first Eric Holder interview, <laughs> and um, I said no 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 he's gonna have to do he's gonna have to do Michelle because it was a timing issue. I hate her. But uh -uh, cause he didn't want to do me. Cause you, like much. so then, but then there was a time thing. So then Yeah, me and Eric Holder was arguing about redistricting. So we was beefing. And then <laughs> I was like, Your daughter pledged the white sorority. What's that? Okay. You know, so I was like, he was like, ain't got to do with me. I said, <laughs> I said she go to UW I just Madison. had, I just birthed her. You know, I'm like, we didn't get your daughter in none of the divide. She went to UW Madison? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. She was no like, wonder. Fact, okay. Yeah, because we was, and in fact, it was the conversation about, you know, offering her internship in the office or that okay. kind of thing. But I forgot what her major is. But okay. yeah, okay. I'm like, girl, the family you come from, the legacy you come from, and you pledged the white sorority, I was sick. Well, yeah, I was absolutely sick. So I told Rod, I said, no, I'm not going to be able to do it. So I came into the studio and said, no, there's a time thing. You're going to have to do it. So I called Rhonda and said, well, I'm going to do it. I don't know how she got here in seven minutes. I and her, saw her. Remember that? That pussy <laughs> had a little pussy hat yes, on. Yes, I did. She got, she got the picture. You know, it was just like, how did you get here in seven minutes? Uh, I mean. And changed and you got dressed. Yeah, she was cute when she came in. Yeah, she was. That was going she, like, she was ready for how it. How should I react to that? 
It's Eric Holder, bro. It, it, what you want? Were you tearing up traffic to it, get to another dude? Come on, man. I mean, what? It, it, I mean, I'm going to have to talk to her when I get home tonight. Carla, welcome to the program. <laughs> Say what? <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Paris. How are you? I'm doing well. Dr. Myers, how are you this morning? I'm doing well. So, okay, a couple things. I was ear hustling on you and Michelle's conversation. Uh-huh. Um, you do realize that um, Eric Holder's sister-in-law was the first person to integrate the University of in Alabama. Alabama. So her, her sister, uh, Dr. Hunter Malone's was sister, University of Georgia, right? Yeah, Charlene Hunter Gault was Georgia. Charlene Hunter Gault was University of Georgia. She okay. and Hamilton Holmes. Yeah. And uh, uh, I forget her first name, the venue, to the venue Malone. The okay. But her last name is Malone. But he uh, married his wife as Dr. Uh, Sharon Malone. Oh, okay. So, okay. yeah, Dr. Malone had a, a excellent practice uh, out in Washington, D.C. And she recently retired a couple of years ago. Okay. But then I was also going to mention, um, you all were mentioning Hazel Scott. Hazel Scott, if you watch the movie, go back and look for the movie Rhapsody in Blue. Mm -hmm. Rhapsody in Blue, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think that's where she um, did her dual, her, like dueling piano by herself right. um, in that movie. So she did Rhapsody in Blue. And I know she was in, I think, a French film as well. Now, but, were you, uh, uh, real quick, because I know you're a musician. So Rhapsody in mm -hmm. Blue was really written for two pianos, right? Is that yes. right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. The actual composition was written for two pianos. Yeah. But okay. you know, when you are so bad all by yourself, Gershwin. you can play it yes, by that's yourself. Right, the Gershwin brothers. Yes. That's right. That's Gershwin. <laughs> who did yeah. Porgy and Bess. Yeah. Porgy and Bess. And who has yeah. stipulated that. Only black actors can do can do Could Porgy and Bess. Yeah. There will be no blackface for Porgy and Bess. Yeah. Wow. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I um, uh, I got you here. <laughs> uh oh. Okay. <laughs> so ridiculous. Oh and God. I just want to say before we go there, thank you to everybody who came out yesterday to donate blood. At the blood drive, I appreciate it. it. All the slots were filled. We had people that just showed up. So it was an excellent event. Versity um, is an excellent partner to work with. We will also work with Sickle Cell Warriors, Takara, um, Henry, the organization. So we did a lot of good work yesterday. So thank you to the community for coming out. And I would have uh, had to go to Racine yesterday during that uh -huh. time. But, uh -huh. uh, and I came to yeah. one you had at Vincent. <laughs> And my poor well, wife couldn't good. She couldn't give. I don't know if she was able to give blood because they couldn't find a vein. She oh wow! Veins. Yeah, yeah. Vein, yeah, yeah. So they couldn't find a vein, and so we we had to sit there, and sit there. But yeah, yeah. I heard you get, he, uh, was yeah. jockeying yeah. for movie tickets, but he didn't want to come get blood yesterday. I appreciate that. Um, yeah. you know. and, and, and this is what I was going to say. Thank you for this, because I think it's important for us as descendants of enslaved Africans to donate blood. We're the ones usually most in need of blood, yeah. but yet yeah. we're least likely to go give blood. So The same with organ donation as well. So we're yeah. just trying to educate the community. Because we always about... think we're going to need it. I'm going to need my blood. I'm going to need my I'm going to need my, my kidney. I'm whatever you asking for. I'm gonna, I may need it, man. I can't just be giving you my stuff. Yet your cousin may need one too. I just so can't. I just can't one. be giving you my stuff, man. Come on now. <laughs> you know. You know your people. Well, you know, Michelle, people like you with that sweet old blood. You know, I'm just saying, fam. But you know, people who have but I'm, I'm, I'm still a donor. You, I, you, know, but, yeah, you know, I'm like, Shh, you need and, what? And since I've come and given blood to you, <laughs> or because of you, <laughs> like, how did that sound? Uh, that man, they'd be blowing me up, man. Oh, you're um, gonna get that call. Oh, you, man, you on I'm the register? The call, I'm you, getting you, the text they messages. They're so nice, though, when they call. Yeah. How's it going? Good, got some blood. Get some blood. Haven't seen you in a while. Let's go out. <laughs> where, where would you like to go? <laughs> to the blood drive at Destiny. Can we can we go ahead and put you down? Like, uh, okay. Your yeah. last name is it, it, the pressure Le is real. Below <laughs> Bell Bella Lagosi. Your last name. <laughs> you want me to come give some blood? The pressure is real. Uh Rep Meyer, somebody heard your voice and said, What time is the event over at Vincent High School tonight? Five o'clock PM and I'm glad you mentioned that, Michelle. You did mention at the end of your show, I think Keith for allowing us to 
talk on his show. Uh, we invite everyone to come out to Vincent High School tonight at 5 p.m. The Education Resource Fair will begin at 5 p.m. So we have representatives from the Boy Scouts of America, Girl Scouts, uh, Camp Kimberly, which is a, a residential, um, what does the kids say, the sleepaway camp. You can do that. Um, other organizations, MPS Recreation will be there. Just a lot of different opportunities for kids. I know we'll have um, some of the UWM pre-college programs will be there. So there is something for your child to do over the summer. There are summer research opportunities at some of these colleges and universities for high school students, and they will give you a stipend and pay you to learn something. So, I mean, what better way to do uh, do it than do it that way? So please come and, and learn more about these opportunities for the summer. Um, we don't want our children to be idle over the summer. They either need to have a job or be academically enriching themselves. So please come out and do that, and then we can get into the literacy conversation. So tell people about the what time the actual documentary is being shown. I'm sorry, Keith. The documentary is starting at 6 p.m. It is The Right to Read, um, and we'll have a talk back briefly after that. Um, but please come out and, and learn more about literacy policy. All right. Appreciate you. Thank you. Uh-huh. Caller, welcome to the program. <clears throat> Michelle. <laughs> uh, yes. It's Jim Acosta. Jim Acosta. Yeah, so you remember that now? When yeah. Trump went off the stage, he tried to take the mic from dude, and then he realized what he was doing and ran back up on the stage. Yeah. Um, uh, from he, hey, Keith. CNN. Hey, yeah, hey George. CNN. Thank you. He, uh, yes. Oh, he yes. can't stand Jim Acosta. Yeah. But you so he, he's, a, he's a coward. Yeah. He's thought he was a big boy, and you did. And, and, and I want to and I want to mess with your colleague. Oh, please do. <laughs> Duncan got in our butt the other day. What did he say? What'd you say? Duncan got in our butt the other day. You know what I'm talking about. Since <laughs> <laughs> he always want to mess with me. <laughs> oh, it clearly registered. <laughs> right. He, he almost up. fell out the chair. I just want you to know. <laughs> I know he did, but damn. Because him and some other dudes. Anybody that's watching can tell you I'm telling the truth. Oh my he God. almost fell forward uh, out that chair. You know, there are certain players that I have been on. Uh, and Duncan Robinson is one of the players that I, he is overpaid. He underperforms except against the Bucks. <laughs> <laughs> so, go figure. So, and so. I, I want to switch out one white boy for the other white boy. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? But his his contract, they can move him if somebody took him because uh, he has a contract that they can throw in for value. You know, in the NBA, when you make a trade, it has to be equal value. Mm -hmm. And so, 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 so did they mess up, Keith? Did they mess up by bringing Doc on? No, I don't think so. I think, you don't think so? I think it was the trade. I think it. I think it's. I think we're dealing with the residuals. Not that uh, Damon Lillard hasn't been playing. But then well. we messed up by bringing Dame on there. Some is messed up. Yeah. Who took Bobby Portis's place? Bobby no, don't trade Bobby. Bobby, Bobby can't play it. no D, but Bobby. Bobby, <laughs> Bobby can get high. He, he, you know what I meant to tell you? I'm that, sorry. Blue that, collar still play for the play team. No D. <laughs> Bobby's gonna get a statue next to the Crusher in saying, South Milwaukee. I thought they was trading Bobby. No, players. you I know, thought I heard that. Ain't get you know that Bobby. Drew Holiday was a tough trade. That was ridiculous. That was tough. They shouldn't have did. But for a lot of folks, Bobby, uh, uh, not Bobby. Uh -uh, really? Not I, man, I thought Bobby. I heard Blue Collar was getting traded. They, they had talked about it. I know, I heard But it. that's he's a fan favorite. I'm sure So I'm going to ask you this, Keith, and I'm going to hang up. I'm going to mess with you one more time. Why, why? You never can explain it to me. Why are they keeping Connington? They let, they let the uh, contract. Uh, 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 contract. Yeah. So how big is this contract? It's well, not that big. That's contract. why you keep him. It's not that big. Well, I think he's why, about what? How big was campaign's contract? <laughs> Cam? Yeah. Was Cam, how many years Cam been in the league? So I would have got rid of, I would have kept Cam and got rid of Connington. I said that's so you don't like the don't Patrick make. Beverly pickup. It's okay, but I would have, I would have got rid of Connington for him. I wouldn't have got rid of the other night, him. man. He had two turnovers right back to back. I was like, oh dude, man, dude. It, I don't know. I don't think it's Doc Rivers. I think that it, you know, you want to have chemistry on the team. 
and I think they're still trying to figure out the chemistry. Look, it's we got still, a whole bunch of dudes who don't know how to play defense, man. Well, they Dave know how to play. play they're defense. not playing. Bobby can't play defense. Connington can't play defense. That's on the coach. I think the coach got to put them in a better position to play defense. And um, now I understand they will be able to, to get some practice in and be able to probably get a sense of what they're doing. Plus, let's look at it, man. The Bucks are old. You know, I mean, the teams that that they struggle against are the younger athletic teams because they can't run up and down the court with them. All right. Thank you, y'all. I appreciate I had, you. That's, I couldn't think of his name, so it just came to my 66-year-old mind, Michelle. I appreciate it. Thank you, bro. I know exactly who you're talking about. Yeah, I thought him and Trump, man. Trump, what, did, Trump didn't want that smoke. And then he, he didn't did, want it. Did he get barred? He did. From uh, the press room he at did. the White House? Yeah, because he petty. Because dude is small. He is very, very small. To be such a big man, he's very, very small. But he didn't want none of that smoke because he would have caught it. Oh, man. He didn't want none of it. Like when you actually had to go up against somebody. Oh, and who? Oh, and man, him and April. Yeah, April Ryan. April and that Ryan. level of disrespect. Oh, man. You know, and I applaud her for her self restraint. Where is she? she? I just saw her do an interview. She was with Clay Kane somewhere. Okay. Um, But yeah, but her hair all long now, and she's just looking all luxurious. Like she didn't got out the stress. I'm <laughs> like, what's going on? Yeah, she look good, but no, Trump didn't want none of that. Do you know who's going to take Joe Madison's spot? Do you know? I do not know. And you I think listened... it's going to be Karen Hunter. No, because Karen teaches during the day. She's a college professor. Okay. And so she'd have to adjust her class schedule, okay. and she's already started school. Okay. So long term, I don't know, because uh, Karen the... does. She teaches during the day. She did the tribute. Yeah. I heard a little bit of the tribute. Yeah, year. you know, I could see possibly, but see, you know, and Joe got like a certain kind of uh, listener. Yeah. yeah, that's not Karen Hunter's listener. Yeah, and um, Clay Kane, that's not his listener either. So it'll be interesting to figure out what they do. Uh, it's going to be hard to replace though. Yep. Yes. Caller, welcome to the program. What's up, Brownie? What's what up, bro? It's all good. Happy uh, Black History Month. Thank you, brother. And into the year, be reminded of that. We create history every day and have been since we've been here. Y'all don't get it twisted. None of them, them, them other folks. Um, but I could, yeah, all of them, Whitey. Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, brother. No, brother. <laughs> clean that up. Clean Keith. that up. I'm sorry. I, I was, I was I asking a question. No, no, no. Don't clean it up. No, no, no. no what no, what no. directed to you? Uh, Michelle had showed me something, and I had an off mic remark that got on mic. No, we were asking okay. about April Ryan's uh, new spouse. That's all. And that's why. Hey. All right, man. Go clean, on, well, I you know, look it she, up now. See, see if, if she got question. something to clean up, then well, no, I'm, I'll, I'll leave that alone. Yeah. Okay. Um, because I, I'm not, I'm not that way. I mean, you know, um, the Most High created us all, and uh, just some of us have uh, lost the 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 human side of us. I guess I'll put it that way. Um, couple things. The reason I called, what prompted my call was the comments about donating organs, particularly a kidney. And I believe that came from my sister. And uh, I would just encourage those who have a loved one who need a kidney, consider the cost because it is a real sacrifice. But don't let it be something that prohibits you from saving a life. Um, you are I a don't kidney re- donor, right? Absolutely. I don't regret it. It is it's not been easy. And I think as I've reached, you know, um, this age where I'm going into my seventh decade, um, the the effects, if there are any, which I don't I have been I have not been made aware of, but I think as as I am aware of how my system functions, my my internal system, I start to notice things that relate to how 
our kidneys process the things that we take in, particularly sweets, and how the liver and the kidney work to process that stuff and get it through your system. Um, but there's a lot to that, too, as well. The doctors told me that, you know, I could live fine with one kidney, that some people are born with one kidney mm -hmm. and don't have any problems. So saying all that to say, don't let it discourage you or keep you from saving a life, particularly when you're a match, because that, from what I understand, is the most difficult thing to find is someone who is a perfect match. And when you find, when they find that person, therein lies the, you know, that, that, that mountaintop moment, I say, where you go up there and you, and you start really contemplating, you know, can I do this? And, you know, am I willing to make that sacrifice? And, um, I'd encourage you to do it because it, you know, I got nieces and nephews now that are here and grandchildren grand great nieces and nephews because of them my brother's no longer with us but you know his legacy his life it lives on and, and my nephew and this is over 30 years now because my nephew is 32 he's got children and so there's no doubt it was worth it um it's not a question even with the things that i start to have to consider now you know, but then, you know, the most I told us, hey, three score and 10. And if I get that plus, I can, you know, I, I'll be happy. But, you know, that that to me, it made it worth it, even though I've got grandchildren of my own. And so like you, Michelle, I understand what you were saying. You know, you might need it. And we have a concern about how, but we, I mean, you know, the world we live in now, there's no telling what could take us out or what could cause us to have health issues. And when you look Don't at the, the number of black people who, for example, right now are on dialysis, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it, we deal a lot with kidney disease. Uh, and for whatever reasons, um, people don't necessarily want to donate uh, like yeah. blood marrow yeah. for sickle cell. Um, yeah. You know, so, yeah. Yeah, I've got a niece that's on the list right now. And she's got, you know, she, she has dialysis, um, you know, and so... Uh, and that's, I believe, is something related to, you know, her father's, you know, um, health, family health history and that type of thing. But, um, you know, it's, 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 it's a real, it's a real consideration that, that you go through. And so I, I just, I wanted to share that because right now I feel like I'm in good health and I'm able to do all the things I want to do. I, you know, my family has a history of, of um, gout. I, I recall my dad having it when I was a teenager. Okay. And that's the one thing that sort of flares up with regards to what I was saying about how my body now processes, you know, the intake of sweets. I have to recognize that I cannot eat too much of it. And it's not diabetes because I don't, I've, I've been tested. I don't have diabetes, but the kidney and the way the liver. No, I know, um, what are your sister's names for Tuesday show? Um, uh, be healthy, be you that Julia. program. Julia. Yeah. So those sisters, I've shared that with them and on your, that program, but that is the one thing that, you know, I have some questions about as to how it's, how it's affecting me now. And it's only because I'm trying to get control of it because I, I can do, do without the sweets. Um, and that's what it really has taught me is how to, how to really take control and manage. And, and it made me seek out maintaining my health the, to the best of my ability of course you know i still indulge in the things that i enjoy but i don't overdo it and that it, it helped me have more discipline over the past 30 years on my intake water consumption all of them things that we still need to be doing anyway you know so i just i really wanted to call and encourage anyone out there and i'm not just you know trying to um put this on my sister because because of what she said because i know she was saying it in just but uh you know, to a degree, <laughs> I'll give you that. But, yeah, and, but it's real in terms of our sentiment, oh, it is. you it know, is. in terms it of is. why we don't uh, don't see the importance of it. Yet we're the ones, especially when it comes to blood, you know, um, we, we, you know, especially because of traumatic injuries that people might suffer. So, <clears throat> um, yeah. All, yeah, and all those things, I mean, all of those things that relate to, you know, how we need to be better supporting and, and prepping for our community to be able to survive, 
in this world and, and the things that are happening to us. You know, it, it goes a long way when we can recognize that science has, has made those, that technology available. And that, you know, from, I mean, I think about it in terms of what I recognize now when they insert a new kidney, right? Because the scar that I have is from the front above my groin to my back around my rib. It's got to be 20 inches long. Mm -hmm. And now I know they, they only do like a three or four inch, you know, incision. Everything is done with robotics and, you know, um, so, you know, we have to consider all of those things and that the most I gave, you know, doctors the ability to, to, to have advanced medicine so that we can better survive, right? When you become a donor. And I, I would say one thing that probably the government and should do is provide resources for those who are donors, yeah. right? Because, you know, in case something happens, mm -hmm. right? And, and you don't really know that it hasn't prohibited me from doing anything throughout my life over the past 30 some years that I've wanted to do work and for other pursuits and things like that. I participate in all this, all the things that life entails. But I would say that if, it, you know, particularly with this, and, and this is across the board, the health issue, but that part they make they make resources available for the the transplant tea they should be, make some resources available for the those who are offering um the donors and the donors and the donees I, I you know i just think and actually that should be with all organs that they need you know if, if they can live without i mean i don't know how all the other ones work but you know so i just want to really say that and then um i agree with george about the bucks i do believe they are struggling and and you know, they, hey, and, uh, George, and then, I'm George. Hey, Craig, let me do this, man. Uh, we have an interviewer who's trying to call in. Our lines are tied up. So absolutely, so, absolutely. Uh, hey, hey, take a look at that photo I sent you all. Okay. All right. <laughs> You're listening to Community Voice. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back.
in Milwaukee for 20 years. High quality custom funeral programs and memorial items, business cards and letterhead, t-shirts, banners of all sizes and much more. Great Impressions guarantees their work will exceed your expectations and their prices are competitive. Stop in or call Great Impressions for your next project today at 414-536-7. Listening to WNOV 860 and W293CX 106.5 in the Milwaukee. Your inside community voice with your host, Keeper. Welcome back to the program. Uh, we have on the line with us Mr. Donald Danzler. He is a candidate for the Fitchburg, Fitchburg Common Council. Good morning, sir. How are you? I'm doing well. How about yourself? I'm doing all right, man. I'm doing all right. Uh, I know some dancers. Oh, really? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Reggie Dantzler. Um, Yeah, yeah. They, they, I, did, I know. I know. I know. I do have some some family in Milwaukee that I don't know, but I, I hail from uh, Joliet, Illinois. Oh, so you're from Illinois? Well, tell us a little bit about that. So you're from Joliet, Illinois. How did you end up in Fitchburg, Wisconsin? Uh, yeah, so without a long, drawn-out story, um, I ended up going to UW Parkside for uh, on a basketball scholarship. So I went there for undergrad, um, and then I ended up going to Whitewater for graduate school, and then uh, spent a little bit of time overseas playing ball, and then I came back to uh, UW-Madison for graduate school for a PhD program, and then ended up just moving to, to Fitchburg for better opportunities and um, lower housing. I mean, uh, more affordable housing prices at the time. So, uh, what was your uh, what was your academic focus? For uh, in undergrad, uh, I received a degree in uh, economics and finance. Um, my master's, I have a, a master's of science and education policy, and then right now, I'm uh, and then a PhD in educational leadership and policy analysis. So, what um, what? What inspired you to want to run for the Fitchburg uh, Common Council? Yeah, I mean, honestly, uh, just being getting involved in the in the community through various organizations, um, such as the 100 Black Men of uh, Dane County, uh, and then uh, I was also the mayor appointed me to the Police and Fire Commission, and I got really to see an inside look on some of the things that were going on specifically in the district that I live in, um, and it made me want to have a seat at the table to basically provide some uh, representation for our people and try to make better decisions that were more inclusive of the individuals that live in uh, the district that I live in and not just the individuals who were, you know, the, the rich individuals or the money makers, but also include everybody. So um, there's more opportunities available and resources for the constituents that live in the district. 
It, is there um, is there what would be the population of the sins of enslaved Africans in Fitchburg? <laughs> There's uh, <laughs> it's about um, about three about three like around four percent right now. Um, it's not a huge okay. population. Um, Fitchburg isn't that large, mm -hmm. um, but there have been uh, an increase in more African Americans who live in Fitchburg just because pockets of Madison were recently uh, recently annexed and added to. Um, Fitchburg, some of those which were in my, um, that ended up being in my district now as well. So, uh, <laughs> this is just a question that was given. So for that, uh, do you see yourself as representing uh, the black community there in Fitchburg? I'm laughing because it's such a small community. Um, and then are there issues that impact that, that community uh, within Fitchburg? Fitchburg? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be, you know, as arrogant to say that my experience or everything I could do, I can represent all Black people because I think we come with our own um, experiences and life journeys and differences. But I definitely think if I'm elected to office, I am mindful of the individuals who look like me in my district and, we're, and be making decisions as such. Um, and yes, there are um, issues that um, impact us specifically around education. So if you're not familiar with Fitchburg, like um, if you're leaving Madison and coming to Fitchburg, there's a point to where public transportation stops. And um, individuals, if you don't have a vehicle or a car, you pretty much have to walk to get to Fitchburg or um, get a ride or take a ride share to get to certain aspects of the city, such as like the police station, the library, city hall, um, the senior center, all of that stuff is back in the neighborhood to where um, public transportation doesn't go back that way. So definitely with support opportunities to increase transportation modalities for the individuals that live there. Um, and then also uh, Fitchburg doesn't have its own centralized school district. Um, their residents go to three different school districts. So you have Madison, you have um, Oregon, and then you have Verona area school district as well that all that all touches Fitchburg. So supporting initiatives such as like a, a community center and things like that for individuals, for students to go um, and do some learning. And then we, we still have these um, huge opportunity gaps um, in, our school, in, in our schools as well. So there's gonna need to be some supplemental education and resources provided as well for those students to kind of continually increase their academic prowess. Well, how did, uh, you know, it, one of the things we discovered in uh, sometimes we, you know, we operate in our own little um, uh, silos. And so when you begin to think about municipalities, we would think that, well, you know, Milwaukee, we have our own struggles, our own challenges. Uh, but I don't think these small municipalities like Fitchburg, they're not exempt from some of the economic uh, issues, right, that uh, larger municipalities are dealing with. So I guess the question I'm asking is, how do you see the impact of the revenue sharing uh, that went to different municipalities and how that impacted on Fitchburg? Yeah, I think um, what, you're, what you're seeing um, that happened in, in Fitchburg is pretty much where <laughs> And the, the, the um, housing prices are, are soaring here, um, especially um, specifically in the district that I that I live in. Um, individuals are, I think I saw a stat recently that um, housing prices have soared from, um, the average housing price since 2020 um, in the district is about 416K mm. for um, individuals. And if you're like me, you're like, that's, a, that's an outlandish number and everybody mm -hmm. can't seem to kind of afford um, that type of uh, that type of home. So coming up with more creative ways and supporting things in more creative ways to basically help um, individuals who would like to seek um, these, uh, a, home, a decent home and stuff like that are definitely going to be needed, um, even in a small municipality like um, Fitchburg. Well, um, how big is the is the uh, Common Council there? How many members? There's a, there are there are eight Common Council members and and then the mayor. So when you when you look, what are some of the issues that you're so you're running in a particular district, right? Correct. So okay. there's the uh, so each, there's four districts, and then each district has two authors. Okay. Okay. So in terms of those things that you identified as challenges, you know, on a on a more micro level, your district, and then on a macro level, Fitchburg. How do you see, or what do you see as some of those things that you want to focus on if elected? Um, yes. Yeah, so again, um, definitely the the education piece. 
um, trying to close the loop on uh, some of those education services that uh, need to be provided because of a lack of a central school district in the uh, city of Fitchburg. Definitely the um, rapid, transit system, tr rapid transport system. So getting access or supporting um, individuals with more access to um, um, transportation in the district so they can get around easily. Um, and then the last thing for me would definitely be kind of um, housing and really making sure that the infrastructure is growing up that's going up is it is affordable for all constituents and not just a, a certain um revenue or income base because that's going to be important because it's a, a recent report came out is uh, Fitchburg is one of the fastest growing cities in in Wisconsin so if we're going to continue to grow and we're going to continue to have more people um coming to Fitchburg we at least want to make it a place where um it's a diverse representation of people living here um and are congregating together uh <clears throat> I, sh I shouldn't assume, but I'm assuming that uh, are there more descendants of enslaved Africans running in Fitchburg? Or are you the only mm -hmm. one? Uh, am I the only one? I'm the only one running right now. That's, okay. that's seated. Yep. But there are other um, there are other uh, African Americans on the council, though. Oh, okay, okay. So, what yeah. differentiates you? I was gonna, I was gonna do a joke, but I won't do the joke. Like, you know, like <laughs> beyond complexion, how do you differentiate yourself between your opponents? Uh, but what, what, what are you know when you look at that and 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 probably what they're proffering in terms of what they want to do? Is there a difference uh, between you and the the folks you're running against? And then what are those differences? Yeah, yeah um, honestly, um, the guy, the, 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 I do have an opponent. Um, to admittedly so i don't know much about him him um nobody has really does he's not really kind of like active out there on social media or campaign trail or doing anything that's been out there um but i think the hugest difference uh between he and i is that one we don't we don't look like this we're not the same skin color um and i don't think and i don't think we have the the same um motives and values for like kind of why we would want to be in office and really um, speaking for a group of individuals that have been um, historically marginalized, not in just Pittsburgh, but all across the um, the country and try to uh, make things better. And again, I'm not trying to come in and be the, the white savior on the hat. Uh, with the hat, I'm just trying to come in and have a seat at the table where decisions are being made and at least have the forethought to be thinking about individuals um, from historically marginalized communities, not just African-American, when decisions are being made and policies are being discussed. Um, and then also just show up and be in the community, too. So very active in the community. Um, the individual who currently occupies the seat that I'm running for um, hasn't done that in the past. So just not just doing things like knocking doors to get signatures and get on the ballot was appreciated by the individuals because they've been living here for some time and have never met their older person or someone hasn't even knocked on the door. What uh, on a more... Uh, on just in terms of how national policies impact locally, uh, we have had the American Rescue Plan and the infrastructure bill. How are those things, have, have you seen the impact or are you gonna see the impact that those two bills particularly would have on Fitchburg? Yeah, I think, um, you know, after the kind of the, the, the devastation of the COVID-19 uh, COVID pandemic, the, the Rescue Act um, powered um, his historic economic recovery um, and delivering much needed funding to hard hit communities, to lower costs for working families, help cities pay essential workers and kind of local economies and small businesses. So um, definitely, I think um, Fitchburg has seen um, some of those some of those funds and has been um, been able to kind of recover a little bit now from the from the impact of COVID-19 and then also talking about the infrastructure law uh rebuilding in wisconsin i think the the biden uh president biden senator baldwin and, and uh congressional democrats delivered a once in a generation investment in our nation's roads the bridges railroads water systems broadband infrastructure with the by the bipartisan infrastructure law so to date i mean you got the 6.6 .6 billion in bipartisan infrastructure law funding is headed to wisconsin with over 11, um, with over 115 million announced for the projects in Wisconsin, third district. So yes, um, specifically the city of Madison will get about um, 15.1 billion. And again, um, we're so close and kind of connected to the, the Madison area in Dane County. And, and as I said before, like some of the 
the land of Madison is even being annexed to Fitchburg. And as we that report came out where the fastest growing city in the state um, definitely will impact kind of the infrastructure and stuff that is being developed here um, in, the, in the city of Fitchburg. When, when you hear uh, people saying that, uh, and I'm talking about people who would normally vote Democrat, uh, who are saying that either they're not going to vote uh, because of the age of the current president, is there a response to these uh, individuals? Uh, yes, um, I think not to, you know, disrespect anybody's choices um, because this is a democracy and people have the right to, to feel how they feel and they're going to make the decisions they want to make. But just keep in mind that not voting is voting in a sense as well. Because every time that we come out, and especially um, during the time when we're honoring Black History Month and the individuals who toiled and fought and were um, persecuted and denigrated for the right for individuals that look like us to vote, um, we definitely want to get out there and exercise that right um, even if the, the 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 candidate you feel isn't you know up to the standard or isn't perfect, I think um, get not voting Democrat is still giving the voice of the other side a larger voice because those individuals they're not saying the same thing whether it's Trump or anybody else who is in there they're going to still go out and exercise their right to vote and then we're going to still be sitting back while we didn't vote we're going to be looking at each other in circumstances that we're in and then wonder why. Um, we have to get out there and make our voice heard, and not just necessarily in the presidential election, but also understanding how smaller city politics play in the larger scheme of things as well. Uh, yeah, I think, and we, as uh, Tip O'Neill famously said, all politics is local, uh, and that we start there, and we don't think about things like school boards or county government, where <clears throat> the the conservatives have, and and mm -hmm. there's a concerted effort then to. Uh, change the complexion of, let's say, a school board. And so that's why you're seeing now where you have some school boards that are banning books, right? I mean, it-, it Absolutely. Which is really incredible to me because um, <clears throat> I'm one of these people, education for its own sake. And this idea, mm -hmm. and I understand there's a political agenda out there saying that there's parts of American history uh, we don't want certain pockets of the population to know about. Uh, so I think it's important that um, we get out and vote. I mean, whether Absolutely. and and even you would think the smallest and, and, you know, really the participation piece comes for us here when we have these awful year elections where we're, you know, electing judges, for example. And Huge, uh, yeah. and, and I don't want to be pejorative, but, you know, in Milwaukee County, if you go down to <laughs> the average court, it, you know, a lot of folks look like you and I. Right. Uh, right. And so who that judges could have impact on uh, what happens to you, whether either on a criminal or on a civil level. So I think that. But I also just think that sometimes I get frustrated. Look, um, we will never get another Barack Obama. Right. Mm -hmm. And right. Uh, so those of us who've been fortunate to be alive during the time that he became president, that's great. But now we, we you know we kind of move into a different direction. And I think a lot of people are holding on to that. But I think I also see that with Trump, that there yeah. are people who, for whatever reasons, they there's a connection there. I don't know if it's, um, I don't know what the connection could be that he, he, he could be dumb like everybody else. I mean, I don't know. I'm trying to figure <laughs> out, uh, you know, like, I remember, I don't know if you remember this back. Uh, they said that, that George, uh, George W. Bush was the type of guy that you wanted to go and have a beer with, right? The, and, the uh, dad or the son? The son. And so, oh, okay. you know, he was, so it was that kind of folksiness that you had, even though, you know, he was the executioner in chief when he was uh, governor of Texas. We're not even going to talk about right. some of the policies that he's implemented. I think sometimes, right. what about when you hear, and again, I want to be, uh, you know, focus in on a particular demographic because that's who listens to our program. Yes, when you hear folks say, well, what, what has Biden done for black mm -hmm. people? Which is always a tough kind of, but how do you respond when people say, well, what has he done? Yeah, I think it goes back to um, your earlier point and I was going to say something, but I don't want to cut you off. Um, kind of similar to when you mentioned like President Obama and by far I'm not comparing the two in terms of what they've done in their, in their, president, in their presidencies 
up until this point. But, but what I will say is that I think like um, African Americans, we need to understand, like better understand like how these processes work and how things happen and um, and what needs to occur for, th for legislation, for policy, for things to be passed and then implemented. At a, at a high level. Um, I, I have plenty, even friends I had, they'd be like, well, you know, Obama didn't do anything for black people. I had uh, people in my family who voted, who um, voted for Trump. Mm -hmm. and, 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 it, and, and if it's not um, couched or if it's not said with like the name black, like in it, then people automatically assume like, oh, well, it wasn't, it wasn't for us. That was for everybody else. But you got to remember like when you're, especially an African-American in an, in an office like that, you're going to be, scrutinized to the T and everything you do has to be strategic to try to have the best impact you can for the for the different groups that you're trying to impact on a on a large scale. Um and I think the the same thing is is um true for Biden. Like they've done they've done some things and I think um what what needs to happen is we just need to continue to be out there, continue to be in rooms where decisions are being made, continue to go speak up at your local meetings and things like that and voice your opinions about what's going on in your community, how things are impacting your children. And then overall, like economically, how things are impacting, you know, where, where you are, where you live in, in your respective municipalities. Yeah, I think uh, uh, I'll always look at what is landmark legislation. And, you know, we go back to the Social Security Act of 1935, you know, Medicare being uh, passed in 1965. And then in 2010, the Affordable Care Act, that impacted mm -hmm. a whole lot of black folks, um, probably in ways that they didn't even realize that it impacted them. Um, yeah, I think, and, and I don't know if that's a dodge for people to kind of go in and go like, what has he done? Well, he's president of the United States, right? Right. And, um, and you're right, talking about scrutiny. And if you did put something on where you're being very particular about ethnicity, it's going to be litigated especially Absolutely. in this environment is going to be litigated and you have a very conservative Supreme court who's going to be pushing back on anything that would look like it's affirmative action uh, for mm -hmm. any marginalized group of people. So, I mean, look at the, look at the assaults on DEI um, that we have going on around the, around the country where to me, I really don't understand it because if you're, if you're pushing these efforts, the, the thing about DEI is getting a common understanding of what's going on in different whatever space that you're in where you're trying to push these efforts so you're cognizant of the the people around you and to me common sense would say hey if people around me are comfortable and they feel like they're included in whatever process or whatever business whatever corporation whatever nonprofit, those individuals who are who are comfortable now might produce better do better work be in better mood so the assault against it i still can't wrap my mind around it or fully understand it well, man, appreciate you. Uh, are you uh, have a primary or are you just a general election in April? Um, it's just a general election uh, in April. Well, man, good luck, man. And I, I appreciate uh, it. Great conversation, man. And, and, you know, and the other, your dancers up here were also ballers. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's what's up. Oh, ma major ballers, man. So, yeah. Sure. Well, appreciate you, man. Good luck. Hope I'm to talk to you again. All right, Mr. Paris, you have a good one, sir. All right. You're listening to Community Voice. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. and Justice Katanji Brown
6.5 FM with your host Keith Paris WNOV 860 All right, welcome back to you. <laughs> I see you. I'm right now. Such a good entertainer. Uh, if Barbershop was correcting this boy to hit the high note, he did the finger. When you do the high note, like the fingers making a difference. But anyway, thank you, Ken. Always, man. He he be jamming, boy. He be jamming. Uh, as you know, it is third. I didn't realize it was third Thursday. <clears throat> it is. Wow. It's coming up quick. Coming up quick. Coming up quick is here. <laughs> you right. So we're joined in the studio by the good folks from the Wisconsin Black Chamber of Commerce. In Good morning, Ruben. Black Chamber morning. moment. In our Black Chamber Good moment. Good morning, Ruben. Good morning. Zasari. So close. Zashadi. Zashadi. Okay, there we go. Hey, y'all. And introduce your guest. Um, we have one of our new cohort members for the Black Restaurant Group from Delicious Bites. Would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. My name is Tamira White, and I own Delicious Bites. Hi, tell them where you're located. Oh, yep, we're located at 6538 West North Avenue in Wauwatosa. Okay, I know that's right. <clears throat> um, so you guys know that we do have a new cohort. Um, so that full cohort includes Miss um one more time. Tamira. Tamira, because I'd be like thinking this is something else and it ain't that. I know Ms. you Tamira. don't have problems pronouncing names. Did you see that I asked? Because you don't even ask. You just be getting I've been struggling getting, with him for yeah, two, three years. I mean, and I love you to death, which it's is crazy. crazy. You don't even like write don't it down. Don't, don't even nothing. know the woman's name. You don't even know how to spell it. That's my girl. What's her name? I can't pronounce it, but that's my name. Miss Z, some, some. Um, but we also have Brothers Back, uh, Backyard Barbecue, Mi Casa Sue Cafe, uh, Tropic MKE, and then two returns from last year are uh, Mr. B's and Perkins Boys on the Grill. Did y'all try anybody? Perkins Boys, my people. Okay. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sort, of, sort of regular there. I know that's right. Yeah. Um, I need to try Brothers Backyard Barbecue. I've never been there. Okay. Um, I always be at Me Casa Soup Cafe. That's Where's all. Brothers located? Um, I got to look that one up. Brother Avril, uh, what me, is it? Me, me Casa Soup is part of the reason my doctor mad at me. So I can't say nothing on the air for you. <laughs> I'm gonna sneak out to see everybody. <laughs> how, how you know we, we let's just kind of bringing us up to speed. We talk about the cohorts. Part of that is investments that you all make. Uh, with these uh, particular, um, primarily restaurants, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but your focus is on customer service, right? Right. So talk a little bit about that. So the the idea is we give them the coupons. People take the coupons into the restaurants, and in exchange for the coupons, they do a customer service survey, and. Then those surveys come back to us and they go to the Sheena and Courtney and they do a monthly meeting with the restaurants to say, these are all the surveys we received. This is what people said. And all the restaurants are per present when that takes place. And uh, if you want even uh, a clear description, a clear description, uh, we can tell you. <laughs> um, during these meetings, um, we also talk about um, their reviews on like DoorDash, Uber Eats, um, to make sure that they're uh, keeping in time with those. Um, we make sure that they're replying to those reviews as well. Um, we do bring in different professionals as they let us know what kinds of things they need. Um, for example, if they're having trouble with hiring, um, if they're having trouble um, with getting good um, employees, if they're having trouble with keeping customers, if they're having trouble with um, good customer service. Um, so every time that they let us know that they have an issue, we take that back and we find an um, expert of that and we'll bring them in. Um, and then they'll give them some type of 
help. And then after that, if it didn't work, we keep going with them um, to see what more they need. Um, every cohort that we've had, um, they're welcome to come. Um, so then the cohort just keeps getting larger and larger. Right now we have 14 restaurants that we're working with. So do they? Do you guys come together in a plenary session or is it something you start initially? Um, you know, when you're meeting with her, is there an initial meeting? You kind of go through expectations. How does that work? Yeah, definitely. So um, Lashina, our chairwoman, she'll go through um, um, each of the different restaurants. She'll do a staff meeting with all of their staff members so they understand what the program is, um, if they receive the vouchers, what they should expect and what they should be asking from people. Um, we're also going to start putting in a table. Uh, what are we calling those? Uh, table tents kind of things um, where we also are promoting different customer service reviews and then also promoting our events um, throughout the different restaurants. Um, we also do our where to go and what to do promotion with the restaurants as well. Um, so we've mentioned that that's our tourism piece. Um, so that goes into all of the restaurants. Um, it goes into all of the hotels in southeastern Wisconsin. It goes in the airport and also the train station. Um, it has all of our restaurants so then people know for sure where to go um, to our restaurants. <laughs> What um, are you, you know, we do have the uh, Republican National Convention coming in July. So are we, are you working with them in relationship with them in terms of being able to indicate there are different vendors, different, you know, because we're, what are, you, what are you estimating, about 50,000 people? So what we have done with our um, where to go and what to do in Black Milwaukee is in all the hotels, and the tourist destinations and the corporate headquarters, right? So that when people come into town, they won't have an issue uh, locating black business if they want to do business with black business. Um, we have not um, been reached out to by the RNC and uh, in, in reverse, we have not reached out to them. However, we are doing what we need to do for our businesses to make sure that when the RNC does come to town, our businesses can benefit. Um, we're also letting them know where they can <clears throat> sign up on the city website with the RNC committee, with the RFPs that are coming out. Um, so that they are first um, aware of those things coming out. I've seen things like um, police officers needed. I think they needed like dump trucks. Um, so I know that they definitely need food and then they'll definitely need different things that our members provide as well. Yeah, when are you using those dump trucks for security? I couldn't tell you. I That'd be in the using. RFP, I'm assuming so. Yeah, that's what they're using it for. Because mm -hmm. I, I know they're going to have a perimeter around five serve um and and what it, what it looks like tell us a little bit as delicious bites did i get it right wow so there you go first of all you have a memorable <laughs> name of your business yeah so what 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 made you want to do delicious bites Woo. um when my son was about three we had a birthday party for him um and things were financially a little tight so i made cupcakes but i used the recipe of a pound cake because I didn't know that there was a difference in the recipe. So I made the pound cake and I made cupcakes, but everybody liked them. And my baby wanted more delicious. So it kind of grew from there to people asking and requesting me to make cupcakes and things of that nature. And then we graduated and then there's smoked chicken and then it's catering and, you know, all the things. So were you um, a cook by training? Or? I am a cook I mean, by should... or chef, chef by experience. Okay. I'm also a third generation chef. Okay. Um, my grandmother owned four restaurants, two bars in the city when I was younger. Both of my parents were chefs at some point. So it's kind of trickled on down to me. So when you get to that, um, that you're in the family business when it comes to cooking, have, have you, is there a difference between, and this is a softball question, but is there a difference between how you operate your kitchen, your personal kitchen, and then what you're doing in terms of your business? No, because safety is safety. Um, once you learn it, for me at least, I can't unsee it. Um, a big thing is with catering, when you consider requesting information for somebody to cater, let's just say your event starts at 6 and it's going to last until 10. Food has a safe holding time. So your caterer should be like, hey, at 8 o'clock, you shouldn't serve this to anybody after 8. But when you think about traditionally at home, 
you go to somebody's house for Thanksgiving, food been out from 12 o'clock <laughs> until 10 o'clock at night, and you're going to pack it up and put it in the refrigerator and warm it up the next day. And it's so unsafe. But it's how people were taught. So if people never take serve safe and learn the safety temperatures and holding times and things like that. They just operate the way they know how to operate. Can't do that. Absolutely so, not. So we all are safe and things. Absolutely. Now wait a minute, wait a minute. What about the flavor sending me? Like, you, you know what I'm saying? The flavor sending me in the next day. Wah, 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 wah. You know wah. Wah. So look, so when, look, when your happens? stomach starts feeling that little bubbly sensation, it's probably because your food been sitting out a long time. Not just because. Oh, yeah, that's what that was. was. Oh. Your stomach might be, you know, everybody kind of get used to it. You just like, ooh, my stomach so just get a little something. That's the bad bacteria. That's the bad bacteria. That's why you slip. It's all the things. But you know. Safety. I will yeah. never look at Thanksgiving meal the same I mean, way ever again. Wherever you go, just think about how long things yeah. are sitting outside. You go to a barbecue, they have like, potato, so they have like potato salad. Buffet. It's two hundred oh, degrees outside. What about buffets? Buff yeah. What they the buffets are required to swap yeah. out food oh. within a certain amount of time. Oh. Like, oh. Even, oh. like oh. even if you go to like a gas oh. station and they oh. serve food, right. you don't the know if they. But you don't oh. know if they swap. Yeah, yeah it's so hard. Been rolling for so even when I used to work at a gas station, so I know. Listen. Different. Mm, I'm just I'm just there. not eating at a gas station. I'm gonna grab a bag of chips because it's closed okay. and that's that's safe. A bag of nuts or something. Wait, wait, oh, 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 oh. Under the heating lamp is fine, but there's still a certain amount of time even under the heat lamp. But even the, the taste and texture changes because it's been sitting so long. Mm -hmm. You know, it is. You know, one of the things that you hear some of the people who sell chicken wings will tell you is that they're good the next day. Like that's of course you stored them properly, but they're good the next day. That's rare because if you don't get them eaten at a certain time, they they turn into they turn into something else. So, but I think that that's important when you talk about that because we we don't we just kind of take it for granted that Let's it's going to be. Even think about your event now. We said your event started at six, right? So you might get there at three o'clock to set up, and you're gonna say tomorrow I want you to cater. I need you to be there by four. Why do you want me there at four with your food? So it can be there from four until ten. All of those hours, like you have to. And I think people don't think about that. So as a caterer, then that's where you come in as, and you you um, insert your expertise and say, OK, I know that your event starts at six. So for safety reasons and for your food, I would prefer to come a little closer to six so you can have a little more longevity with your food. I think people just want. Uh, oh, I, think, <laughs> <laughs> I think people just want stuff set up. The, it's the it's the idea like having it set up in time. Yeah. I get all of that too, but <laughs> like, is it worth you potentially yeah, but, being then, sick behind? Here and, and thank you for that because if you want it at four, we're gonna have a particular serving time. That serving time is that serving time, but that don't always work that way. It don't. So what if you so run it late to serve right. and it's sitting here burning? The yeah. burners were burn for like two hours. Typically, you'll put a two hour mm -hmm. fire under. So once the fire goes out, it's done. Then it's gonna start to get cold. And then it's just sitting. It's like all of it. All of the things, so I think just culturally, we're used to. Oh, uh, yeah, we probably have strong stomachs. Yeah, yeah, I mean, from, <laughs> yeah, hey, but Kiki, Kiki, it always goes back to slavery, it always goes back to slavery. <laughs> grandma, where, you could uh, almost go. Grandma now, I'm gonna say, now, I'm gonna tell like, you something about my, about my grandmother mm -hmm. right. two o'clock food is served at two o'clock. Mm -hmm. You're not casually walking in. Uh, I'm not gonna call any family names, but you know, but no, I mean, you know, to me, and I, and, and I'm a stickler on this. If you tell people you're eating at two, eat at two. Mm. We you're announced not, two o'clock. Right, we announced two o'clock. People rolling there four o'clock. Like, dude, come on, man. We and then you're trying to figure out because we got to do grace. You know, you gotta. But yeah, thank you for that See, because you there's just another reason. Establish that culture. If you don't have that established, people gonna come in whenever, and then you just miss the meal. Like you don't have to get a to go box. Right? See, like my family is habitually late. We're mm -hmm. late to the party, but I don't, you don't have to wait to eat until I get there. Right. Because I know that we're likely to be late. Mm -hmm. So, but also there's typically nothing there for me to eat because I don't eat meat. So I'm mm -hmm. not in a rush to get there to watch y'all eat turkey and ah. all of the things that I don't eat. <laughs> Sorry, you vegetarian? Woo! I don't vegetarian? like to label myself. No, I don't. I, I eat seafood. Okay. Um, and I do a lot of vegan-ish. I like butter, so vegan would be really hard because I like butter. Mm -hmm. Um, butter makes everything better. Mm -hmm. uh, you got something coming up though. Something coming up next week Thursday will make one year that we are open in Tosa. Yes, congratulations! So, exciting. Um, 
it's been interesting. Not bad at all. Just interesting. Um, definitely not what I expected. Um, however, I didn't really know what to expect. I wasn't sure if people were going to like beat the doors down, but I just feel like it's working the way it's supposed to work. It's a nice flow. We're consistently still catering. People are still coming in off the streets that didn't know or have recently heard about us. Like yesterday, I had an opportunity to be on Channel 12. So I was swamped yesterday. I mean, when I say sold everything, I had nothing left yesterday. Probably at 3 o'clock, I was winging it until 6. So um, that's, that says the, the, the importance of exposure. Mm -hmm. And being able to expose the pit folks there, you know, part of them coming on here, you're announcing it. But because if people don't know that you exist. And most of the people that came in yesterday were new faces. Um, and the bulk of them did say that they hadn't known about us. And some said they had driven past, but wasn't sure. So they hadn't stopped. And what does your menu consist of? So we're primarily a bakery. So we carry fresh baked cupcakes, cookies, cheesecake jars, cereal treats, turtles. <laughs> chocolate covered pretzels, Oreos, all of those things. Um, in addition to salads and wraps. Um, so we have some salads and wraps. So you can essentially come in and grab you a cup of coffee, some banana bread, a cupcake and a salad. Good. It's a nice balance in there. Uh, I want to take a call. Sure. <laughs> call or welcome to the program. Well, hi, I just wanted to first say congratulations to Miss White. Mr. Wright on their year anniversary coming up. This is Mr. Wright. I always uh, come in and support them. I always grab my favorite um, salmon salad. And I tell you, for those that haven't tried delicious bites, you are missing a treat. It is uh, incredible. And I, you know, I try to make it there at least once or twice a week to support them. So they are they are doing a great job in the community, and I just wanted to congratulate them live on the radio. You guys are doing a great job. Ah, thank you so much. Indeed. <laughs> Did he say that was a Mr. White? He a said, Mr. Wright? He said, Mr. White. You're Miss Wright? I'm Mrs. White, and then there's a Mr. White, but his name is Mr. Wright out on the radio. Mr. Wright. He was confused. He was just saying congratulations to me and my husband. Oh. I thought that was your husband. No, that was Mr. Rideout who comes in at least twice a week to buy a jerk salmon salad okay. or two. Okay, well, that's right. Jerk salmon <laughs> salad. I'm a, um, and I did look up a uh, big child. I can never say this person's name. <laughs> Brothers Backyard Barbecue is on 35th and National. Hmm. Yes. D -B -B. Three B. What is it again? Barbecue. <laughs> Brothers Backyard Barbecue is on 35th and National. Oh. What building are they going to? 3530 West National. So that would be on uh, the southeast corner, right? Yeah, I, I think I know where they are. Okay. Don't you worry. I will pull it up. There it is. Yep, yep. I was closer to 36. Oh, yeah. 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 There you go. Yeah. Technology. So uh, because we are in the, the Black Chamber moment, what do you all have? You already up. know what third Thursday means. Riddle spoons. <laughs> <laughs> Today, our third Thursday networking event featuring the pitch competition will be at North Avenue Market. We will be there from five to nine. Um, as everybody knows, we have our one minute pitch competition. Um, everybody is welcome to sign up. Registration for the pitch competition is from five until five fifteen. Um, if there are more than five people signing up, we will go on a raffle basis, um, and the raffle will take place at 630 when the pitch competition starts, and we will know who our next five people will be um, pitching. Um, and then the people or the person that wins will be a contestant for December um, for our Black and Diverse Business Showcase, and they will be in the running for $10,000, $7,000, and $3,000. Are you excited for Renna's Spoon? And app audio. Okay. <laughs> I've been waiting on you to pitch. I, I, you know what? Who knows? What, what could I pitch? <laughs> You're listening to Community Voice. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to Community Voice, and uh, up here we were just talking about the uh, ramifications of the RNC coming in, just some of the logistic things in terms of uh, security perimeters and credentialing of people who are going in. Uh, <clears throat> Ruben had mentioned that they had anticipated when the DNC was coming just to be right outside the perimeter, right? We had uh, six parks reserved. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. We, we, sorry. Uh, we had six parks reserved, and we ended up with King Park, Washington Park, and Johnson Park being the parks that we had the activities planned in. Um, that's um, um, the one downtown um, by the by the water uh, near the Performing Arts Center. The Marquette Little Park one. On oh, Pierre, Pierre Marquette. Pierre, Pierre Marquette. Yeah, yeah well, uh, Pierre Marquette Park. They took away from us. Uh, uh, because she's a square that took away from us, mm. and one of the one other part of the six parts that we reserve, and they said we're going to use those for security, so we can have those. But they gave us the ones in the black community, pretty mm. much. So, um, but then once they canceled it, was moot. Uh, but it'll probably work the same way with RNC. They, are, they have the same plans that they had for the DNC. They're just going to implement the RNC. And um, it should be interesting. Um, our businesses are already, um, are, the, the hotels know where the black businesses are. Um, the, um, uh, the corporations know where we are, right? And the so everybody knows where we are. So really, it's just a matter of making sure that um, we are have our product in place. Mm -hmm. And once our product is in place, we just sit back and wait for people to come spend money. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of what, what you do and with your business, how many how many employees do you have? All right. Currently, it's just myself okay. and my husband and my son. Okay. So then you don't have to deal with the um not yet. Um I'll have some youth come on for the summer for with through Employee Milwaukee, um, which is pretty cool. Um last yeah. year was my first experience with having staff, so I'm getting better at delegating. It's part of letting the baby go. Like, mm -hmm. you know, the business is the baby. So being able to trust them to do things on their own. Have you seen the bear? I did. What did you think? I thought it was good. It was really intense. I'm, I'm anticipating the next season. Hopefully, they'll have a next season. It doesn't say pe people <laughs> don't know the bear is uh, this uh, this um, series that they're doing. It's on Hulu, I'm thinking. Uh, talking about a restaurant business mm -hmm. and how this guy transformed what was a sandwich shop into a, I don't know how many stars you get with Michelin now, but he was mm -hmm. trying to get it up. So, but to see what goes into a kitchen and the uh, the amount of planning 
that goes into it and you know them going in and being able to anticipate for example how many meals they're going to prepare that day it was more of a science than i realized there's another one too on apple uh, lessons in chemistry i have to check that out which is very interesting this woman is a um what is she she's a she's a chemist mm -hmm. And this was done in the 50s. So in the 50s, they weren't hiring female chemists. Mm -hmm. So she ended up doing a uh, cooking program. And she showed the connection between science, the science of cooking and, and chemical things, what you do. I was watching a, uh, a cook off <clears throat> and one of the chefs was watching this guy prepare his, his mood. And he said, no that pasta is not going to work. And then he went in and got into all the, the textures, the, it was the chemical. It was amazing. So when we think about cooking, people just think you just cook. It's, it's more involved than that, right? It is. It's definitely very, very involved. Um, I'm a creative naturally. So cooking is just another way for me to be creative. Um, I enjoy it a lot. I like to see people's reaction when they eat. So do you write down your um, recipes or is I'm it? I'm working on that this year as I'm trying to delegate some stuff. So I need to have some things in place so that when my staff comes in, I can say, here's a recipe for this. Let me walk you through that. Um, it was a challenge at first because you think like giving your recipes away or worrying about whether people will like take your recipes and run with them. But they can run all they want. They're not me. Okay. <laughs> Oh, that's right. So essentially, that's what it is. I mean, you can Google a recipe for almost anything. Be, you can watch I, YouTube. You can get on I'm Facebook and join early. a group. You can find all the recipes you want, but that isn't going to Facebook, make you me. The Facebook groups to get you. I'm part of Black Girls Who Shop at Trader Joe's group. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. Yeah, I went I've watched that. One. Now the new trend is everybody's going to Aldi's. I was like, don't y'all mess up Aldi's now. Aldi's is my spot. Mm -hmm. They doing all the TikToks about all Everybody. the things that you can find mm -hmm. at Aldi's. And Aldi's is actually they're they're, they're at, Trader they, Joe's sister and brothers. They they yeah. owned by the same people. Well, you saw and you saw their presence, their footprint uh, during the Super Bowl, which kind of tells you then what their national marketing thing is because that's <laughs> that's the commercial. Oh, you didn't watch it? I, I saw it. I, I didn't only, see that commercial. I was, I was only. I was for the Usher, Usher concert. That was it. <laughs> oh, we were only that there roller skating. Listen, that, that was top was, tier. That was, Don't play with him. Uh, I, I said he, uh, he's there for game. that. You know how many things could have went wrong on skates, right? Okay. And then the crazy. And he was singing, and then he went underneath the job. Let's can we talk about that? Well, yeah. I was just talking about the the, the fifteen um, wardrobe changes okay. in like five minutes. Don't play with him. Like he a Diana Ross, you know how, yeah. do, how you change clothes so many times. We used to have a DJ back in the day who used to do that little mic. He changed three, four times doing it. You a DJ, man. <laughs> no disrespect to DJs. I'm just saying. But yeah, he'd have different outfits. And... In that short amount of time, that was such a little amount of, it was so it was intense so to be such a little, like my son was like, that was, he done? Like, that was it. It seemed so long, even right. though it was a short amount of time. Well, because I think it's like 15 minutes. I think I heard 11 or 13. Yeah, it's, it's so somewhere between there. Players got to get back on the field. They got to get all that stuff off. All those people. I can't oh. imagine being there and watching them set up for yeah. this. I've always like wondered what that is. Because, you know, we get commercials, so we mm -hmm. have no clue. Showtime uh, did a thing. It's called The Big Game or something, where they show you how they put together a halftime show mm -hmm. and everything that goes into that. But what he did was just like... Man, it, that the roller skating thing, course, and then. Um, did you also see that the the band in the front spelled Usher? No. Oh, y'all need to get up in the. Go, I gotta go back, back and watch. You gotta go back and watch some more details. Like, the band itself said Usher underneath him as he's performing when they went up in the panoramic view. Oh, he was doing great. But also, he included so many other elements. Oh, so many people. You know, the Jackson State Band. Mm. Uh, oh my God! Yep. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Yeah. I, I must have missed that part. I didn't see the skirt. Yeah. At what point? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I, well, I, win some, lose some. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody was talking about it. Alicia. She she did great. Alicia, this thing. After like uh, she did hit that note, sounded like uh, me no, at the no, beginning, was, just a on, little bit. I was gonna say after the first or second bar. She, she had to warm up a little she bit. She sounded like it. me. She, 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 she is like one of the most pedestrian. Ah, uh, I I and. Yeah, I, 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 well, I'm just saying she, she's she's.
a lot of people love Alicia Keys, but I, I'm not a big fan, man. Her on the other on the other she hand, she killed her it. That. Her is that was yeah. phenomenal. Yeah. Oh my yes. God, she uh, she she just yeah. I, 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 I there, and I know she's done well, but for me as a music listener and my eclectic taste. Um, I think it's yeah, she, your playlist. Yeah, no, I wouldn't I put her on no my nope. Alicia nope. Key on my playlist. No I Alicia no Key. Beyonce on my playlist. I think she made yeah. it commercially, like she did well commercially. She did, yeah. but I don't know that, like you said, how many people are is she no, on their Spotify channel or they lit right Mary her, J. Blige like commercially is great. Yeah, I mean, I think and, I, and Mary J on your playlist, Ruben. You sure? None. Really? really? See, look at them none. confused. No none. real, real love. No, but I would I would say with her it's, though, I listen uh, to you know her. On my playlist. She's more palatable to look at uh, for certain segments, and I think that that was part of her get over. Um, I know if you watch the Grammys to see, like I always did, like Tracy Trap Ch- talking about uh, Tracy Chapman, mm-hmm. who wrote incredible music. She's not going to get the same play that Alicia Keys all. would get. Because um, it's an image they want you to have. Oh, there's an image, right? And I think now. I, I I I could put Mariah Carey in light bright, but the the difference with Mariah Carey, she could actually sing. Uh, I mean, actually yeah. sing, sing. You know, her her octaves and all of that. But Alicia Keys to me is like Chardé. Mm. Huh? <laughs> Chardé, you you. Oh, no, I said shots are being thrown all around town. Oh yeah, I, I mean, I, <laughs> I, I go after Alicia Keys. I just, I, like I said, I, she's average. She's not Yolanda Adams, obviously. There are so many great singers out sure, there sure. who don't have. And look, Beyonce gets great songs. I mean, Beyonce is probably a little bit above average have in terms of her singing. Have you seen all the backlash that she's getting right now with the country album? Oh, she did a country album. So now she dropped it during uh, the summer. Act, uh, act number two. Yes, Act Two. So Act One was Renaissance. You know, we all did that. Then Act Two is now a country album, and there's a lot of different country stations that are saying that they won't be playing her country album. Why? I couldn't tell you. I, I, could, I could guess. T- I could but. tell you. Because <laughs> Lil, Lil Nas X really set country music. <laughs> I, I mean, they he still. He too. What happened to him? Huh? No, I he didn't. He just did a HBO special. I ain't seen or heard yeah. of him. He ain't out, like, outside like how, how he used to be. No, he used to be outside. Yeah. He grew up yeah. a little bit. He grew up. He just be going to the little events and stuff he like that. He ain't causing no, no trouble and right no, now. No ruckus at the moment. I'm sure. I mean, he was supposed to drop a. A music video, and every time he drops a video, it's ruckus. But then he'll go he, away. Yeah, he he back. is a person who does the boundaries. I gotta give him credit, man. He gets up yeah, to it, it, and then no, he isn't. And I, but I think that also boundaries were created by the society. Are they really boundaries? <laughs> Did you listen to Beyonce though? I, no. I okay. I did yeah. the whole album. I'm not like a one song girly. Oh, so they only drop one song, it's not like one or two songs. Uh, I was curious mm-hmm. to know how people felt about the actual country music. I mean, it's interesting. That- I love country music. I'll be honest with you, man. They're, they're the country, country. If you really sit there and you listen it's to good. those folks, first of all, they can sing. They can. And and country is really white blues. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so you know, it resonates with us. And then I think that there's a connection between um, the Scott Irish and the Anglo Saxons who were in the South, <coughs> and how they they suffered uh, because of poverty. So when you go, if you, I'd listen uh, to white Christian gospel. Mm-hmm. These ah. folks are incredible singers. You just back up and go like, hey, ooh, I'm a big, I don't know how we got on this, but I'm a big yeah. Sandy Patty fan. <laughs> I think Sandy Patty is just like, but you hear these great voices and it's something Keon says all the time. Music has no color. Mm-hmm. Music has no color. Um, and it's really cultural. So it's the environment that you grow up in. Uh, my goddaughter went to her daddy daughter dance Aww. and um, they showed her dancing. <laughs> ah, no sister, rhythm in sight. Sister, yeah. sister, Ooh. sister. You you so, dance. but then here's the consolation. That's the sweetheart, but you're smart. You don't have to be able to <laughs> oh. dance, okay? Oh. You, know? <laughs> you, call, nah, you don't have to help that two step out. Well, you know, listen, she gonna have, she gonna have can, to learn to support. To that. I'm, you know, we can't be great at everything. Right, I right. can't dance and sing. I do a bunch of stuff, but dancing and singing, you just let that slide. You mm. ain't even got to sing, mm. just the dance part, just the two-step, you'll be all right. Ooh, that two-step bad. Is that right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's rough. I'm trying. One of these, before I kick the bucket, I'm going to get it. 
I'm gonna get it. Yeah, I mean, step gonna be together. You go out sometimes. You going like, oh man, and she was just. It was just like, and you sitting there and you kind of going like, you you, come on, sister. Mm -hmm. But like I told her, because you're smart, sweetheart, you don't have to worry about. Man, I be at church too. Um, We got a couple uh, new people been coming in and all offbeat, and it's okay. You are there for the Lord. He'll get you together. Don't you worry. You need to be on beat. I don't know if it's a black <laughs> church, but you real oh no, everybody on then you don't do you know, you gotta that 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 community rhythm. I uh and I and that's what I appreciate <laughs> what you all do. The importance of celebration in our culture. Okay. I, I mean when 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 black people celebrate, we celebrate. I mean, there's something to what we bring. It's to celebration, a party. yeah. I mean, and 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 I do this with church. I say it's the it's the same thing. Uh, William Murphy the third down in Atlanta caught some heat because oh, yeah, the, the the swag surfing. Yeah, don't know I'm, I'm mm. going, I've seen it. It's amazing to me. But look, what you bet his next New Year's Eve service is going to be packed. Okay. You know, like older people, it, you don't dance like that. Don't go well, the like, thing is that his church might just not be for everybody. It might be for the swag surfers, and that's fine. Let right. them swag surf and service, right. and you go to the service There's where y'all sit tucked. Everybody. Right, right. <laughs> if that's the way he has to reach them, you know, it's a little different. It's not the same right. trying to reach. Yeah, and, and, and you know, generations come along with, with, with their own particular rhythm and and uh, I know there's a lot of older people that don't really get with rap. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm going, well, first of all, you're not used to the rhythm, the cadence, our rhythm cadence in a different generation. Um, though, I wonder sometimes when I'm listening to folks, I'm just kind of going like, was this whole song about profanity? Uh, but mm. there is some Christian rap coming out, and it's a it's a growing yeah. genre. It's hard to listen to, though. It's not. <laughs> what I mean by it's hard it. to listen to because you're doing the, the the gospel. Uh, PBS just did uh, gospel music. I don't know if you saw that. Uh -huh. Really incredible. And when they get into what is contemporary now mm -hmm. and talk about Kirk Franklin mm -hmm. and how Kirk Franklin changed the game. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to tell you somebody who, if you ever got a chance to go, I saw it. I'd love to be in person when Kanye. Mm -hmm. Was taking his gospel thing out. Mm -hmm. That music was incredible. It sure was. That music it was, was just like. So bad and, and there was a whole dilemma too, because he had um, originally put it on Apple Music as a gospel album, and they changed it to be like a rap album. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't want Kanye to be great. Kanye yeah. is genius. Yeah. The people don't. He's see in it. Super Bowl show, wasn't he? When that him in the mask, somebody said he did a commercial with no, his no. iPhone at, at there. I thought Little that. No, yeah, the guy that with the mask. I thought somebody. that was Will I Am. That was, was it Will? That was Will, it was I, Am. Will I Am. Okay, I didn't know who. Okay. I, yeah, uh, I didn't look him up. Who Will I Am? No, I didn't know it was Will I Am. I didn't know who was in there. You know, one of the one of the, I always tell people one of the great parts of having this job is the people you get to have interviews with. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a young lady who was with the Black Eyed Peas before Fergie. Mm -hmm. She had a fallout with Will I Am, and so she left the group. Fergie comes and took it, over. it took off. So when I was talking to her, she kept saying, well, there's no bitterness. I got to think it sounds a little <laughs> bit <laughs> like, bitter. you know, Tom Joyner left the, uh, the Commodores <laughs> and then bam, they take off. So the I'm people. Who <laughs> <laughs> dropped that unwanted weight and you sore, huh? Okay. <laughs> We found out what the wink link was. So. Yeah, you know, but yeah, she she and 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 she was going like, oh, I don't hold anything against them. Well, yeah, Everybody you walked away. It. You walked. Well, she wrote a book, and then they did a little fifteen minute documentary. That's how I had it because it was part of Milwaukee film, mm -hmm. uh, Black Lens, and so yeah, you can you can be in a situation where you can walk away maybe a little too soon. You know where um, you got it. So anyway, I don't know. I'm great. We talked about the. Uh, the halftime show is one of the better ones I've seen. Yeah, I think so too. I think it's one of the better ones. Now, some people, you know, they they so hard, but man, they wore Jermaine Dupri out. Okay, he shouldn't have worn them <laughs> socks. That's what he shouldn't have done. Walked in there with them socks on, uh, looking real little. He almost looked like the ooh. son on the Adams family with them socks on. Ooh, yeah. 
I can't believe that. And then he, that, they posted a picture, and tail. because they're designer, nobody cares. They nobody. still look horrible. This, like, what were you wrong. thinking? Did somebody style him, or did he just wake up and say, I'm gonna put these white socks on? And hey, you know what? <laughs> if anybody who, um, when they when they look at the different fashion designers that they use, now for me, I kind of uh, I tend to be a little conservative, but they'll put you in some stuff. Now, who knows? But then three years from now, folks be wearing it so they might but that's still i don't, don't know about those okay. socks yeah. uh, i don't know he could have gave them socks to his daughter i think he got a daughter uh, maybe he did she take would have she probably would have been that would have been cute with a skirt that was probably a backup choice the original ones probably didn't come through oh no i think he was very no purposeful purpose. he didn't he didn't I know they was gonna eat him alive though yeah, or maybe he did maybe he wanted that press maybe he about to drop an album or something and, so, it you know, seemed now, like a good idea at the straight. time <laughs> And then you go out. I have made some fashion decisions mm -hmm. that really look good to me at the crib. Okay. And then I come out and people going like, oh, not a double no. take. Oh, we had a buddy in college and a guy <laughs> had wrote a letter and said, hey, how's Mark doing? He said, is he still wearing this, this, and this? He said, well, I guess the question I'm asking, does he still dress in the dark? Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, wait. Yeah, it was just like. Yeah, so you could make some fashion, but you know, when people are coming out, and especially entertainers, there there is I don't know what goes into that. It is not like the temptations back in the day. Yeah. It's a Everybody little more flamboyant, a little more flashy yeah, than your flashy. regular. Beyonce had over a hundred different looks at her um tour. I can see that. You know, they were I, I remember on a they were show though. Okay. Talking about the Beatles does. and the Rolling Stones, um, uh, and some of these it. groups that had come out. And he said, you know, the amazing thing about these guys is that the that it was gay men that dressed them. So when you see that style, it was gay men that had put them in. So you saw with the Beatles, they came with the Chelsea boots tight. And then you started seeing the ruffles. Mm -hmm. You started seeing different colors, mm -hmm. you know, where it'd be like, uh. and then Prince just changed the game. I mean, you know, purple will never be the same. Yeah, you don't have, you don't have Cheeks. any prints. You don't have any prints? No prints. Prince was a special prince. being, though. Special <laughs> being. A special being. Like you, and nobody ever is going to be able to walk around with their cheeks out and it's okay. Just him. I don't even know if it was okay for him, but it was him. I know when I came back, he was a Midwest phenomenon. People were like, they just do Prince, man. You got to hear Prince. I saw Prince before I heard Prince. And I was going, oh, what we got here? But you know what? Two or three into it, you forget what he's wearing out there. Had a whole city wearing, uh, had a whole country wearing Jimmy Hendrix. Wearing. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Jimmy Hendrix. Yeah. <laughs> You're listening to Community Voice. We're up on the last break of the program. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to Community Voice as we wrap up again. Uh, the pitch contest is tonight. Yes, 5 to 9 at North Avenue Market. Uh, the registration is from 5 to 5.15 5 p.m. So make sure y'all come register. Bring your friends and family. The audience chooses the winner. Um, and then we'll be able to have a new contestant for December. Um, and then the last thing we'll be doing um, is Black <coughs> Advocacy Day on the 29th. So you're, the you're all going to be in Madison? Yep, we'll be going there as well. I'm trying to arrange so I can go. Okay. So, yeah. But yes, one more time, remind them of your yes. event coming up. So um, our one-year anniversary will be next Thursday, February 22nd. Um, we are located at 6538 West North Avenue. We are open Wednesday through Friday, 8 to 6, and Saturdays, 8 to 4. Um, we're on Facebook, Instagram, and all those great places. Delicious mm -hmm. bites right on the corner with the black and white on in. Can't miss us. Pull yes. up. And if you have one of those $25 coupons, don't forget to leave them a customer service review so we can help them if they need any help. Let me thank Mr. Donald Dantzler. Uh, Let me thank the good folks from um, the Wisconsin Black Chamber. Um, Zashadi. Think of Z-U-H, Z, and then Shadi. What's up, Shadi? Z, Shadi. I'm not going to get it. Ah, it's, <laughs> it's getting busy. somewhere, but it's in the wrong direction. Right. I know. <laughs> I got I to gotta write, gotta write it down for you. Ruben, thank you. Thank, you're welcome. Tamira. Tamira, thank you. The good Lord will in the creek don't rise. We hope to talk to everybody tomorrow. And as always, go from this place in peace.